Welcome to another Real Talk with uh, me. I am the Associate Pastor at Living Word Fellowship, and I'm with my good friend, Mr. The Legendary, Darren Reed. <laughs> Say hey to everybody there. What's up, everybody? That's it? Yeah, just, what's, you know. Just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Tell us about yourself, man. What do you, like, oh, who man. is Darren Reed? Oh, man. We're going to go... No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> do you really want to know? Yeah, that's a scary thing. Um, <laughs> we got. I was a former youth pastor for 22 years. This guy's youth pastor for how long? Oh, well, we're just. I'm about almost starting my 20th year. Yeah, so, so we got 42 years of uh, uh, youth pastor stuff in here. Yeah, so I get a little. I hang out today. with junior high kids all day, yeah. so uh, you know, <laughs> uh, being serious is kind of hard. So, uh, family, career. What do you do? What are you all about? What's Darren Reed? Who's he, man? Well, I'm married. Cool. Uh, yeah, married. Uh, my wife, Andrea. We have three kids. Uh, Faith is 10. Uh, Tim is eight. And Evie's five. So, cool. yeah. Awesome. Any more coming? No, no way. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> that's a hard no, isn't it? <laughs> that's a hard no. That, that's a, that's a, that, no, that's not happening. Yeah, We're that, done. That's right. You already passed that train stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So you're 41. Yep. 41. Uh, career, what do you do? I uh, work with Campus Life, Youth for Christ. Uh, actually, just almost, like I said, just almost starting my 20th year wow. in awesome. February of next, uh, of 2002. Yeah, I'll be- Seriously, congratulations. Oh, That's hard to do in youth ministry. Oh, dude, I love it. You, yeah, it really- You know what's funny? Like, I never really, um, I don't think of myself as a youth pastor. I don't like, it's, yeah, I just do youth ministry and- just I'm out kids. in the community, out, yeah, on the campuses, and uh, just doing my thing out there. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah enjoy just it. loving on kids is the easiest thing to do. That was that was my my motto as a youth yeah. pastor uh, was just to love on students yeah. and love God, love students. That's yeah. what I'd like to do, and and I it kept it easy. If it mm-hmm. didn't involve loving students, I didn't do it. Yeah, absolutely. If it didn't involve loving God, I didn't do it. Uh-huh. So it was 100%. like, okay, see you, bye. Yep. You know, uh, that's really cool. I'm so glad to hear that, man. Um, uh, what do you like best about being a father? Oh. Three kids, 10, eight, and five. Yeah. What do you like being about a father, man? Gosh. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's kind of a tough one. <laughs> I got no, I know. So. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's never boring. So, <laughs> no, it isn't, especially with Tim. <laughs> yeah. Tim is, Tim is, uh, he's a fun one. He, 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 <laughs> he, he definitely adds excitement. I, uh, uh, sure he does, so, yeah, man. So, uh, um, no, it's the best thing about being a father. I think is just seeing your kids grow. Oh yeah, seeing them develop, um, seeing their skills, the talents, um, encouraging them in that, and yeah. uh, helping them to you know just develop that, and you know, and yeah, seeing them grow and in, in those things. So, really enjoy it. Yeah. So you got one that's about to become a teenager. She's a tweener Don't right now. Don't tell me that. Don't Absolutely. tell me that. It's I, awesome. Uh, at least I got spies on the campus, so she's gonna have to. She's gonna have to see me. I told her I'm gonna embarrass her when I'm at the junior high. There you go. Yell at across the campus. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I I couldn't wait to mine to became teenagers, man. I, I I loved it. It was it was the most rewarding thing ever. Yeah. I found out how good I was at being a youth pastor. Really? Because I, I at one point I had three teenagers living in the house. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, but I do uh, miss I do miss that ten nine eight seven the thing. innocence. Oh my gosh, man! I just love that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. my kids are kind of still there. <laughs> what's Tim? What's Tim like, dude? What is he like? Is he like a oh, mini Darren man. Reed? No, no, no. We're complete opposites. <laughs> like Tim is, he's funny, man. He um, how do I describe him? He's just he goes all out. Oh, cool. He's all out. He. He, he, I don't say this in a bad way, but he has kind of no filter. Like he just, he just goes, man. He just does his thing, and you know, just sometimes I have to reel him in. And I'm yeah. completely like self conscious, and he has none of that. None you know, that. I'm like, oh, I'm nice. always like thinking of like, you know, I'm very self conscious. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, of how you know what I'm doing and what I'm saying, and you know, and he's just like full on, you know, nonstop, just a hundred percent, you know, all day uninhibited. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. So yeah, he loves to be outside. He's an outside kid. He needs to be outdoors doing, you know, running. You know, if he's inside too long, it's a, 
it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. I bet it's not fun for you. No, 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 no. It's a get you know, holes they're, in they're, the walls, yeah, yeah, yeah. stains on the carpets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've dealt with some of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey man, I've been there. I got three of my own. I understand what that's like. I, my, my, I got, I got three of them. It's great. I yeah, love it. They're I, all different. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're all different. Yeah. Uh, they're all different. It's interesting. You got three. You got boy, girl, boy. Mm-hmm. I had uh, no. You got girl, girl boy, girl. girl. Yeah, yeah, girl, boy, girl. And I have boy, girl, boy. And um, uh, when they were young, uh, Michaela was. She was like the calm in the middle of the storm. Mm. Now she's like the storm in the middle of the calm. <laughs> it's like they all reversed. Well, that'd Joshua be great. And Elijah are like yeah. super chill now. It's great, man. So I know uh, Michaela is like, I want to go someplace. Let's go. Let's do stuff. You know. So, but they 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 do change. That's for sure. Yeah, they definitely. That's cool. So you grew up in a Rosie. Yep. Right. Yep. Tell us about a Rosie. Like, what's a Rosie like? Well, oh man. When you were growing up, small. Yeah. You know, like nothing really there. <laughs> Just a small town. Okay. Um, actually grew up, yeah, and grew up out there. Uh, we went to uh, First Baptist Church. Oh, okay. Yeah, I grew up in a little Baptist church. Uh, First Baptist Church in Orosi? Yeah, First okay. Baptist Church in Orosi. Went there, uh, went to Orosi High School, graduated class wow. in 98. Nice. Showing my age a little bit. Nice. So, That's all right. I still yeah. got you. <laughs> you got some years on me. It's 90. <laughs> yeah, you know, I love it. Uh, very loving community. Um, people, uh, you know, they, they, they do. They just, you know... Uh, it's really cool. The church out that I grew up in, we had actually, um, we had an, well, obviously an English congregation, but we had oh, okay. a Spanish congregation at one oh. point. Oh, well, they, they're still there actually. The English congregation died out. Um, well, I don't say that in a mean way. I mean, it, they stopped having service. <laughs> Sorry, that <laughs> they was all like died. They passed away. They're gone. <laughs> well, my parents, and they, you know, eventually went, went on too. It was just low numbers. And then at, in like probably like the early nineties, um, uh, Pastor Alfred de Lacerda was out there, or he's still out there, um, had a Spanish ministry and it blew up. We had like oh, two, awesome. 300 people there. God, um, we actually had a Filipino congregation that was meeting there as well. So really? we were kind of like a real multicultural. That was That's a, so cool. they were Southern Baptist, but they used our, uh, facility. Um, so sometimes in the morning time we would have, you know, the Filipino congregation would come in with the English congregation and we would have combined services and it was just oh, cool. really that, cool. Just a really cool environment, you know, yeah. there, um, you know, and eventually got, uh, became, oh, I started helping out with the Spanish ministry as well. So, uh, so at a young age, you were exposed to multiculturalism. Of yeah. You know, kind. uh, yeah, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. cool. Loved it. Loved doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So you grew up in church. So when did you know you wanted to be in ministry? Oh when man. When was that like, um, aha moment? Like, oh, probably. Well, I would say that really, I think that for me, it was my senior year. Really? I didn't know it was going to be a ministry, but it's when I may, I'd say when I started taking my faith more serious. Oh, cool. Because at some point, you can't have your parents' faith. Nope. You have to have, you have to eventually develop your own. Yes, sir. And it was probably around my senior year. You were 17. When I, when I was, yeah, 17, 18 years old, when I kind of like, okay, this isn't no longer the faith of my parents. This That's is, awesome, dude. Uh, this, it became my own. Wow. And when it became my own, uh, started going to COS, graduated. Um, I was at a COS. I was a music major, and working in, uh, working at actually at where um, oh, what do you call it? The the store right by uh, Taco Bell. Uh, the, La Princesa. No, no, not La Princesa. The um, United. It used to be Farmers Market. Oh, yeah, it, no, it were um. What's the name of that place? Oh my goodness. Grocery outlet. Grocery outlet. Okay, Sorry. Cool. Oops. Yeah, right where grocery outlet is. It used to be Farmers Market. So oh, I worked okay. there. Um, and eventually I had some friends that were some people I went to high school with that were part of the Spanish congregation and they invited me while well, I was in a rock. So in high school I played, I played in a garage band. <laughs> so we played a lot of, we a lot, played of, a lot uh, of heavy metal kind of, jam. yeah, you know, like Metallica, just like this, you know, this heavy metal kind of rock and uh, kind of stopped, kind of left that. And one of my friends, he, <laughs> he, uh, was, uh, you know, hey, you know, we have a Thursday night, we have an English uh, youth uh, youth service at the church. And I was like, okay, you know, he was like, we need somebody to play guitar. I said, okay, cool. So started uh, started playing there and eventually started playing on- uh, Is with, that when you picked up the guitar? I started picking, guitar, I started playing the guitar actually kind of a little bit late. I started my, well, I could see, I think it's late, uh, my junior, about my junior year in high school. Wow. So around that time, that was when I started playing. And so- um, 
I started playing on Thursday nights with the youth service and um, they eventually, I started playing actually with the, with the Spanish service. I used to go to the Spanish service on Sundays and we would play. And then we had a midweek service on Wednesday night. So it, it was interesting. You know, it was funny because when I first started going there, I didn't know any Spanish. So I would literally, I had a half English, half Spanish uh, Bible. Oh, that's cool. And I would take a dictionary. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I would sit there and I would look up the words on the screen or I'd hear what the pastor was saying. And I would just look up the words and I'd start, you know, developing and start understanding it. And I got decent with it, you know, wow. do okay. Uh, uh, speaking, you know, I'm not great by any means, but you know, I, I try. That's cool. And conversation, I'm all right. Wow. Um, but just, you know, I fell in love with the people, the church, yes. um, amazing people. A lot of people just straight, you know, uh, coming, you know, I don't want to say off the streets, but just people that weren't involved in church. Yeah. So a lot of new com uh, converts or new people coming to Christ, you know, all the time, just super church just blew up, you know, yeah. it was probably two, 300, like I said. That's awesome. Um, and it was awesome to serve in that for about three years. And then that's, cool. that's right before I came to Living Word. Okay. That's when I, uh, about 2000, end of 2003. Oh, wow. Is when I started, yeah. It's wow. funny. That's actually at that church is where I met Johnny. Oh, my really? brother-in-law yeah so no johnny way. was johnny got i wouldn't say he was probably like a, a freshman in high school i still well, i say this in al as well that's where i that's where i met al oh, wow. and uh johnny came and uh, he was a freshman he he picked up bass and he learned it in probably like within a month he started playing with the youth and then he started wow. playing with the the spanish you know wow. team as well the at the spanish service and so you guys have been playing for we've been playing for a long time together we've been playing together probably almost 20 years he's so together. talented isn't he man yeah he is Jumps on the yeah drums, yeah drums the yeah yeah he's yeah he is he's, he's super talented man. yeah now yeah, he's my now he's my brother-in-law <laughs> yeah i love that dude man he's he's such a great guy uh, yeah, him, but, and, him and his wife but with that said i mean al it's funny because al he left the tech world and he became the youth pastor there probably around 2000 2000 about 2001 wow i want to say and so he was part-time youth pastor and he became the part, I think I want to say like maybe part-time YFC okay. uh, at that time. He did a Rossi high school and oh. a junior high. So he was the Rossi. Bruce was head over at Dinuba at the time. Uh, Al was head of a Rossi. And so when he started going on campus, when Al got hired on, I kind of went on as a volunteer. So I just started volunteering and he, I think Al's probably just starting his 20th year now. He, it was around, it was probably, yeah, just around November of 2001 when he started. And he, I started going, like I said, going on with him on campus. And I think the following, yeah, the following February, I got hired on and we've been, I wow. mean, we're together. I mean, I mean. So what is YFC? What is Youth for Christ? What is campus life for those of that don't really know what that's all about? Like, what do you guys do on yeah. a weekly basis? I know it, it involves students, but yeah. what do you guys do, man? Yeah, so Youth for Christ is, it's a nationwide, actually, it's a worldwide ministry. Mm -hmm. We was. started in 1944, and our first employee was none other than Billy, Billy Graham. Graham. Billy Graham started, he was our first employee. So That was really know, that, the beginning of youth ministry. Yeah, that's, and it's, you know, that's the roots of of our of our ministry yeah. is is based you know in that so what and, we do and really youth ministries and churches that's where all that came from mm -hmm. that came out of that whole youth yeah. for christ movement back in the 40s and 50s yeah 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 yeah. and uh it's just i i i know that because youth pastor for all those years but mm -hmm. um i'm just so grateful for uh, dr billy graham for uh, oh yeah seeing that vision for youth and understanding the need there actually his grandson came and spoke um in Visalia, I want to say maybe at our oh, wow. at our auction maybe uh, three years ago. Wow, I want to say it was about three years ago. He came at our is our twenty fifth or no our fiftieth year since we've been. So our chapter has been since nineteen sixty eight. So really? it must have been twenty eighteen. Wow, beautiful. When, yeah, so fifty years, and then his grandson um, uh, came and spoke at our at our auction. This, yeah, wow. really cool. So. So what do you, what is it that you guys do in this area between Dinuba, Rossi, Visalia? What do you oh, guys yeah. do? So our so our chapter is Tulare Kings County. Okay. So like I said, when I came on board, Bruce moved up and became the executive director. Okay. And when Bruce when Bruce started or when I started, there was I want to say there was maybe about five or six of our employees. I think it was it was just myself, Al, Bruce, Janice was our bookkeeper. I think we had one person of Icelia, and then we had one person in I think like uh, Hanford. Okay. We had maybe I mean there's only maybe about six of us, and so 
right now, I think we're about 28. So we've Praise grown. God. It's crazy. You know, the whole, when the whole prayer of Jabez was, mm-hmm. was going on, Bruce, he distinctly remembers praying that. And then all of a sudden it was like, God opened wow. his door to, I'm no longer just the head over Dinuba, Cutler, Rosa. He's like, I have a, two counties yeah. that I'm responsible for. That's cool. So uh, what we do is basically we, we work on school campuses, mostly junior high and high school. So you just don't eat pizza and play guitar all day? We do a lot of pizza. <laughs> like literally, so I'm not even joking. I, I, I mean, I deliver more pizza than Domino's. I'm not. Even, <laughs> I delivered pizza twice today. I took some to Lincoln School. Uh, Steven cool. Sandoval, he calls me up. He's like, "Hey, uh, Darren, can you uh, can you bring me some pizza for I have I'm gonna have some meetings with some kids. Sure, dude, I'm on it. I got time. I can go at eleven. And then uh, we end up picking up some pizza uh-huh. back in and uh, going to the high school. And nice. I go back in and those guys like, "Man, you're back already?" Like I'm like, "Yeah, dude, those didn't fill me up." <laughs> so. So, no, I, I mean, literally, dude, every day uh, I have pizza on campus, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> Sweet. I, I love that. Sign You know up. what, though? The funny thing is, like, like sometimes people would see my campus, or you're the guy that brings pizza all the time. You're the guy, you know, every time you walk on campus, never fails. There's kids that, hey, can I have a slice? That's like, a pizza guy. Like, like, yeah, today. <laughs> there, I mean, kids were like, hey, Darren, can I have a slice? Can I? <laughs> like, well, you got to come to club. And you know what's funny, though? I mean, it's one of those things that, um, it seems so trivial, but there's something about bringing food, Absolutely. sitting down with kids Yes, sir. where even if you don't even have, like there's certain times like, like, uh, in some of my clubs where I'll just bring pizza and we'll just sit and talk. There you go. And the walls, these kids that are, you know, the really troubled kids or yep. something like that, that no one will, they won't talk to the admin or they won't talk to the teachers. They won't open up to any of them. They'll just sit and they'll open up to us. Oh, and it's like, and they think <laughs> it's funny because they'll say like, oh, you guys are the guys that just bring pizza and have play games all day. Well, no, but we have, you know, we, you know, we do a lot more than that. We, we have serious conversations with go. these kids and yes. um, to reach them, you have to be real and you have to, uh, they're like the old saying goes, uh, kids don't care how much, you know, till they know how much you care. Yep. And that is motto is so unbelievably true today yep. more than ever. Yep. I mean, we've had kids too, where they literally, they won't talk to anybody else on campus, but they'll talk to some of our mentors. That's beautiful. And like, <laughs> yeah, like, um, I mean, it's just, just kind of who we are as, as an organization. We do. You can't fake stuff with students, man, with teenagers. You can't yeah. fake it. Yeah. You can't yeah. fake it till you make oh, it. Oh yeah. Especially the kids today. I mean, nope. they, they're, um, they know fake. They know, and uh, yep. they they sense. Um, oh, you're just. I heard them tell uh, people too. You no, know, you're just here for the paycheck. Mm. But they'll talk to our mentor. They'll talk to our mentor over. They'll talk to Will. They'll talk to Luciano. You know, they'll have a. You know, they because they're engaging with them after school. Yep. These kids call them or they'll text them at night. Hey, Yo. I'm going through stuff. There you go. It's it's not a nine to five job. We don't leave campus at three o'clock and and you know check out or. And be like, oh, we're done or whatever, you know, or like it's, it doesn't stop. It's just like pastoring. Yep. You mean, you guys, I'm sure you guys get past, you get oh yeah phone calls and you guys get text messages, you know, all the time, you know, hey, we need someone to be over here, you know, and it's no different. No, when you're dealing with people, people continue. Yeah. You have to continue with them. You do life with them. So yeah, uh, we, we do, um, I do several things. So I have, we have, we do a lot of mentoring now. So, I mean, like I said, we've grown so much in the last, I want to say 10 years. Wow. Um, we had contracts with a uh, Visalia school district for, for a while. And then, um, that kind of led into getting contracts here in Dinuba and also in Tulare. So we have a huge team in Tulare. I want to say Pretty probably good. 10 or 12 people in Tulare. Wow. Um, and then we have, I think now, I think there's 10 mentors, Al, myself, uh, Carol, and then Bruce, I mean, Bruce is everywhere, but, uh, 13, I think so people full time in Dinuba. Yeah. yeah. So we're on every single campus. And one of them is our very own youth mm-hmm. pastor, Anthony Montano. Yeah. Anthony's dude. He is. Isn't he great? He is. I love that dude. Amazing. I'm, li- I'm literally his biggest fan. Oh, you should see him on campus. That's yeah, I mean, what like, I hear. I like no joke. I mean, Will who works with him, he, their team, he just praises Anthony all the time. Oh, Anthony, he's cool. no, seriously. He, Anthony is done an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he, a legit dude. Man. Yeah, with the campus, the kids love him. Every time at lunch, he has like 15, 20 kids around him all the time. Yeah. So it helps that he's good looking too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I, I wish I had that problem. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I hear you. I hear you. Um, so what do you see in our community, uh, Dinuba, mm-hmm. Arosi, this kind of, this part of the uh, county, uh, mm-hmm. what do you see in our community among children and youth? What are you seeing? Like, what are some things that kind of stick out? Mm-hmm. Well, not necessarily problems, but just things that you see. It could be problems mm-hmm. too, of course, you know. I think one thing that that we really try to address is the fatherlessness. Wow. Um, so kind of when we started having, um, when we got contracts uh, contracted with Anuba, that was one of the things that Dr. Joe um, um, mentioned that he really wanted to focus on was kids. He's a really strong Young Christian men really without mean. father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Joe's amazing. Um, but having working with young men without fathers. Wow. And the impact of that and seeing some of the relationships i get emotional because sure i think, I think there's some of the guys um Absolutely. on our campus um some of the the relationships that they built with some of these kids where um like one one time one of our mentors he uh he was taking a kid home and the kid asked him would you be my father <sighs> and it's like would you be my dad like that's like that's heartbreaking but sure. it's also like a blessing because without Steve, you know, on that campus, yep. you know, or without Will and Luciano or whoever yep. on that campus, um, being there. So uh, Dr. Joe, Mary, and the whole board for having the vision to taking a chance with our organization, uh, for us to be on campus, uh, and, or not just be on campus, but, you know, to be contracted to be there 24 seven, you know, all day and having that faith in our organization, um, is huge, dude. That yeah. dude, that dude gave that kid a chance. Oh, I know. And he gave him like... a chance, and that's all some of these kids need. Sometimes that's all. And that's what I needed. I just needed a chance. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. my youth pastor poured into me. Uh huh. You know, and I looked up to him, and and it just, I, I, I was looking for something, and he paid attention to me. Yeah. And he saw something, and God spoke to him, and oh yeah. And I tried to replicate that throughout my years of being youth ministry. Even yeah. today, you know, you, you got to do it. Yeah. Um. So. Steve gave him a chance. Oh, yes. And he was there. He was available. Oh, totally, totally. And it's like, and like I said, it's not a, we don't just clock out at three o'clock, school's out. Um, I mean, we, we're we doing um, so many times doing home visits or... These kids got parents. your personal cell phones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, the mom and dad, if they need something, they call us or um, we have concerns or something. Well, you know, we'll talk to mom and dad as well. And um, All done in the name of Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of that, I mean, like, we have to be careful. Like, when we're on campus, sure. obviously, you know, we're there uh, in a mentoring capacity. Um, so we have, on your yeah, yeah, we're, no, 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 no. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, we do have Christian clubs, like at the high schools, like we, yep. at, at a Dino Baha'i, we have the Club Ignite that we had yep. today, which is a, it's a, it's a Christian club. And then we, at we have the Rock. Um, and, but I also have clubs that are strictly mentoring where we don't do that, but, it's about relationship. Yes, sir. It's all about building relationships. That's great. You have to build a relationship with kids. They won't care what you, who you are. They don't care about a degree on your wall. And I'm not, that's, I'm not trying to knock oh, no. people that have degrees. I have a degree and it, I, my schooling is very important and I don't want to knock that at all. But some of these kids, they just don't, they don't care about that stuff. No. They want someone that's going to be real yes. authentic and someone that, that really wants to be with them and, and, and knows that they, that that we love on them, you know, in a positive way, you know? So talk, talk about that. Like you mentioned some short things that you get short term things that short things, short, <laughs> not tall, short and tall. You mentioned some short term things. Like you were able to meet that kid. You were mm-hmm. able to talk to that dude and you know, whatever, but what are some long term effects of now that you've been in this thing, 20 years, oh, February, yeah. whatever it is, right? February. Yeah. February. 20 years, February, you've seen, you've had a chance uh, I, one thing that used to irritate me and just just irritate me a lot was I'd see youth pastors come and go. Mm-hmm. They'd leave in 18, 20, 24 months, 36 months and be like, I'm out. I can't deal with it. But you don't really see fruit until three, four, five, six yeah, years later. Absolutely. So what are some long-term effects of YFC, of campus life that you've been able to witness? Well, um, Luciano, he was a kid who's one of our mentors now, he was a student. When we first started, actually when Al was at Youth Pastor in in Rosa, Luciano was one of our youth. Wow. And so, and it's funny because when he first came back, when we hired him on and he was at the junior high, he remembered some of the teachers and like, what are you doing here? Because he was, you know, always in fights, the troubled kid, um, you know, troubled home life and stuff like that. You know, he's just getting, you know, just 
kid with troubles and you know eventually he found uh he, he you know al is funny he, al and his wife would go pick him up you know for youth service and take him to church and this kid in turning his life around and, and i say kid he's in his mid late he's like in his mid 30s now but you know what i mean like but and now he's part of our ministry and actually funny enough when i really started becoming serious about my faith was when bruce had a uh, a little thing out in the park here in Roseanne Fewich 20 years ago when I was in high school. I remember Bruce going on campus. Wow. So I, was, I rem- Bruce You're is affecting me. Yeah. I mean, in, in a sense, yeah. I remember. Luciano's a product. And now yeah. He's even like Sergio. Sergio, who's a mentor now, wow. was a was a student that went through uh, our youth center. He used to come to youth center all the time. So we have, um, you know, just seeing that longevity and uh, some of these people coming back and, and serving wow. and being part of our organization now it's 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 huge we have actually a lot of staff that have been on even guys in Tulare and Visalia that have been on for 15 years that's you know, amazing plus, man man, so man Bruce is doing a really Castro's good job Castro's been on a long time yeah Henry loving on Serato's been on for all time care of you um, yeah we have some a Frank uh, so why do you and, stay at this for 20 years dude it's not like you're getting rich. Yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> so definitely do why, it for the money. I mean, we. Why do you stay? Why do you continue to do this? What what a, what a, what cranks your tractor, as they say in the south? It's a call. It's a calling. There you go. Because it, it's it's funny because you know we 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 have been on campus for so long and it's not about um, moving up the ladder. No, <laughs> it's never been about moving up the ladder. I mean. And even if I move the ladder, I wouldn't be making much more anyway. So, you know, you're like, sure. <laughs> there's not much. Of, you don't go into ministry for money. You know what I mean? So, um, oh, you hit the ceiling really quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we're ministry. And well, the thing is, Al and I, we're not funded through the through the um, uh, the contracts. So we're completely ministry or missionary funded. So we fundraise everything. Uh, we businesses, personal churches, uh just whoever, so beautiful. Yeah, we're completely self-funded, so that's awesome. So if somebody wants to give the Darren Reed fund, they can. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you definitely can. You can go no on problem. our you can go on our website and make a donation if you want. There you go. See, yeah. did you hear that? What's the website? <laughs> um, TKYFC. Oh my gosh. Dot org. Yeah, it's uh, www.tk. I want to say tkyfc.com or I'm not sure. Dot org. Just oh, give man. to the website on the bottom of your screen. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll put in the link or something we'll put in the chat. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Look up you for Christ, and you'll you'll see her, dude. That's a great testimony. That was actually my next question, and just kind of rolled right into it with Luciano. Oh, no, that's yeah, that's yeah. amazing, man. Um, so so many stories, yeah. That we can share. The last twenty months, we've been hearing words started out as epidemic, <laughs> then it went to yeah. pandemic, and now mm-hmm. we're hearing the word endemic, which oh, yeah. really means that this thing's never going to end. Um, but navigating around this evil virus, which your family had just had got done dealing with and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and myself as well. Uh, how has this caused you to think differently about your position at YFC? Oh, huge. I mean, we, when COVID hit, I mean, I like, just like everybody, we had to pivot. I mean, our organization had to pivot. Good we had word. to figure out, it's the only word um, it yeah, it really was. I mean, okay, we can't be on campus. There's no kids on campus. What are we going to do? Everyone, just like everyone else, had to learn Zoom, had to learn Google Classroom. Uh, And, you know, just uh, we had to meet with our students. So for that three months that we were kind of out the rest of that year, we just strictly met online or called kids or text. You know, some of our kids were junior high, high school. So some of them had phones or whatever. We could text them, making sure, check in on them, um, you know, and to fulfill our contracts. And so the end of the summer came and the following year they had, they were on distance learning. So... Distance learning was fun. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it was. No. I, well, I had a fourth grader and a second grader. So <laughs> guess who got to stay home and do that? <laughs> you know, and so, you know, Bruce is an amazing boss and he worked with me on my schedule. My mom and my, my mother-in-law came in and did a day each with the kids. And so for three days, you know, I was teaching fourth grade. I was teaching second grade. Wow. I was the principal, the vice wow. principal, the janitor, the lunch lady. I mean, I filled every role, the PE guy. Yep. Let's go. Yep. And it was difficult. So I had to completely change my role. And in a Rossi, we're not contracted. So I really had no contact other, you know, with, with students, with, I couldn't go on campus. There's no one there. So for me, when when we had distance learning, I just said, God, what do you want me to do? What's my position this year? And 
it was to so in order to fill our, our contracts we did home visits wow so what we did is we would go and visit our students we wouldn't go in the home because we didn't and you know we took all safety precautions wore masks and, so we had instead of going into the homes we went to the homes i should say cool and kids came out you know, we'd come outside and we'd bring a football or we'd bring something like that, Drive talk to them a little bit. So a lot of the kids were staying inside so much, like just indoors, just getting them out for 15 minutes at a time was was huge. And just talking with them, checking on them. That's awesome. uh, a lot of times we would go and we would see kids and there'd be no one else home besides them. Um, or maybe mom would be home, you know, and single parents. Yeah, that's My tough. heart goes out to oh, you because yeah. kids home all day and you're not home having to work. Can you imagine being or, a parent I mean, by like, yourself? Dude? There were so many things. Oh, it was difficult for me. And I mean, uh, you know, it, it was unbelievably difficult. Yeah. There were days where I was so stressed out and just exhausted mentally. Yeah. I would tell Andrea, I, I just need to go for a drive. You know, there I need to go. I need to get out of the house. I can't, I can't be here. Um, just, you know, for myself, let alone a single parent. So. Yes. What was a blessing though, is when we would go and talk, you know, we would go to the homes and we would talk with the kids, the kids would go back inside, get back on zoom, you know, cause they'd have like a 10, 15 minute break, but we'd go right between their classes. We'd go, okay, let's go see the student check in on them today. <clears throat> and then, you know, maybe mom would be around or dad or somebody, yeah. grandma. And we went up talking to mom or grandma or whoever's there cool. for, you know, 15, 30 minutes, you know, even, you know, sometimes longer conversations. Was that a time you were able to minister? To oh, them? absolutely. Absolutely. Talk to people like, Hey, how are you doing? How's, you know, what's going on? Um, how's everything in your home? Are you needing anything? I mean, we were able to hit, meet people's needs. That's awesome. I mean, we had, we had a family that was completely homeless living in their car. We had kids that were plugging their I mean, they would sit in, they had a, in the park, they would plug into the wall, their, 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 um, their computers. Yeah. Their Chromebooks. And they would have, a, they would have a MiFi and Chromebooks and they would zoom from the park every single day. And so we were taking them food all the time, checking them, bring them to the youth center, you know, helping them out, you know, any, which, I mean, Jeez. some of the guys just showing immense love to them and buying clothes or whatever shoes took them to Don shoes. And I got to give a shout out to Don. Or Don Shoes, um, the, he is amazing. Really, he has supported us for years, and <laughs> just taking kids there, giving us massive discounts. Where I'm like, I know he's not making anything off this. Wow, you know what I mean? We're like helping kids. Amazing, amazing person. Jesus, uh, skin on. That's what. Oh, you're oh absolutely, amazing person. To always helped us out. You know, when whenever we needed him or. or or uh, you know when I went to the went to the shop or went to his place. Wow! And so just being able to go and minister and see kids and 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 help them out and it it was very difficult. But at the same time, we got to see what's going on in the home, help wow. them out. Uh, we developed, I, I would say, even better relationships with the parents too that we wouldn't normally see because. When a kid comes on with us, you know, parent signs, uh, like a like a little, you know, hey, the, the mentor can meet with my student. A little, not a little, not, I'm going to say a contract, but they, you know, they sign it. Sure. Know, that, that you, and so we talk to the parents, but usually it's like when they're picked up, you know, it's really kind of hit and miss here sure. and there, you know. And so this really gave us a chance to really get to know the parents That's and, awesome. and meet their needs as well. So it, it was it was really cool. Good job. You know, you know it that was, it was probably one of the, I want to say blessings that came out of COVID, but I mean, that opportunities and uh, where we really got to speak and minister to families. Driveway ministry. Yeah, the, the whole way, ministry. yeah. That's amazing, yeah. man. So yeah. let me kind of put a bow on this part of our of our conversation. Has your work with students over the last 20 years building up to 2021 and almost celebrating your 20th Oh, yeah. uh, anniversary has your work with students gotten easier as you've gotten older and more successful in your calling or has it gotten more difficult oh i would say as you get away from their age well more tenured i think um it's weird because when i was younger you know you're more uh aware of like what is like what's in yeah. all the trends yeah. or you know and and you could kind of relate more with the students a more of a relational ministry but I don't know. I would say maybe the last like three, four years. I think something about being coming a father. Yeah. It changes you. Sure does. You know, I mean, when, and so going in and seeing kids, 
speaking from a fatherly role mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. than like a, a peer role. And you think there's that's more effective or just different or uh, just different. Okay. Because it can be different. I mean, I think, you, you know, it depends on the personality of the person. Uh, I feel like I'm definitely more tenured. Like I feel yeah. like when I speak to kids, I'm, I mean, been doing it for 20 years, like, you know, doing club. Um, I don't want to say it's easy, but like, you know, um, you know, I, I, I know, you know, how to put together, uh, you know, 30, 20, 15, 20 minute, you know, lesson, you know, with the kids and just do, yeah. Cool. So I definitely feel like it's it's gotten easier and gotten older. Okay. So at the very end of our conversation, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask what you feel you want your spiritual legacy to be. I'm not going to ask that now because right now okay. is the most difficult thing you're <laughs> ever going to do. Okay. Right, here this we is go. our lightning round. All right. Lay it on me, man. Lay okay. it on me. Let's go. I'm going to ask you a few questions. And it's going to require scared. an unscripted word, one sentence, one word in your response. Are you ready? Okay, one word? One word or one sentence. That's all you get. <clears throat> okay. Okay? That's going to be hard. You ready? Oh, all right, let's like, do it. This is like, right, this right, is right, intense, bro. This is like Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Boom, we're hitting it. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. Life model. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, love Jesus. Okay, I'll take it. I don't know that. I'll take I don't it. Know. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> That's simple. I don't know. Love Jesus and uh, follow him. Come on now. Yeah, but when you follow him, you're doing his things. Yeah. Because you're seeing him and you're reflecting him. Favorite movie of all time? Oh, Pastor Mark's going to like this one. Braveheart. Really? The Wall. No kidding, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, I remember. That's my favorite movie. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. kind of it's older now. So. Oh, it's a great movie, though, man. My kids ask me, Dad, what's your favorite movie? You know, Brave, are you, I don't know what that one is. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty old now. <laughs> yeah, it is. 1995. Yeah, yeah, it's in, yeah, it's in the, <laughs> the 90s. 26 years old. Yeah. Best piece of advice anyone ever gave you? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> you said don't script it, right? Okay, I thought of my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's uncle <laughs> Ken Ken said he goes Darren he goes just remember one thing just shut up and show up <laughs> you know when planning a wedding he said Darren just shut up and show up and that was probably the best advice going into my wedding <laughs> was like honey what should what color should we you know for the tables and flowers honey your uncle told me to shut up and show up I just, I just, uh, so <laughs> Thanks, I Ken. You got me out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. That's good. That's why Andrew is still with you, brother. Yeah. I tell you what, man, this guy is awesome. I appreciate him <laughs> thank you, so thank very you. much. Um, uh, where am I here? That, that shut up, show up is <laughs> awesome, man. That's beautiful. If you had a mulligan in life, what would you do differently? Do differently? What would you oh, do I'd, go, I'd buy Bitcoin in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, mulligan, uh, sorry. He sorry. does have a Bitcoin. Oh, oh yeah, I got my social sure Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's not financial advice. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the sorry. legacy you want When to you do. said first thing, that's usually. See, that's uh, cool. That's uh, good. That's what I'm looking for. No, you got a uh, mulligan uh, in life. Uh, what mulligan would you do? I'm definitely parenting differently. I would wow. definitely do things different. Um, yeah. Okay. For, yeah. Okay. Oh, I parent. All right. Uh, your mentor, your hero. Oh, mentor. I would have to say. Um, I would have to say Al. Wow. Wow. It's been there forever, man. Dude, we've been, that's we've, high praise, bro. Sorry, I get emotional, but uh, I mean, just thinking about it, we started ministry together. Um, we've been through so much. I mean. Wow. That's that high praise. Yeah, and just I would say my Dude, hero. I would say my hero. Choked up too. You man. know, it's just like because I know L. It's crazy. I mean, we've done so much together. Just been through so much from ministry campuses. I mean, just through life together with him is, uh, you know, it's been awesome. And uh, I'm scared the day he retires because I'm going to be like, I don't have my sidekick. <laughs> so he is getting a little older. He's getting a couple of gray hairs up there. Yeah, he is, but he's. <laughs> <laughs> I know he was coming off campus, like, dude, my feet hurt. He was like, doctor says I need to quit eating gluten. I need to take gluten out of my diet. My feet are starting to Heck like. No, all, man, so that means I'm no like, tortillas. I'm like, Al, you can't stop eating gluten. What's wrong with you, dude? Come on, man, What's, you can soft on me, bro. That's right. <laughs> Person, living or dead, you'd like to have a conversation with. Living or dead. From past history to now, oh, you'd like to have man. a conversation with Jesus, dude. I mean, come on, how can you? Okay. I mean, that have a have a conversation face to face in the with, flesh. Oh, in the flesh. I mean, that would be. Can you imagine those twelve dudes, oh, man, and one of them. I mean, turned his back. I don't even on know him? if I would be able to talk. 
right? <laughs> like, you're like, what do you say? Like, <laughs> like, just sit there and stare. Hey, how's it going? You know, you're like, <laughs> you know everything about me. You know, <laughs> like, like you, know, you know what I'm thinking yeah, right yeah, now. Exactly. So, what do we even need to talk? I know, about? like, <laughs> can you imagine like kicking back? I know, like, like disciples, they're just kicking back. Lord, don't. And then you got like John is like putting his head <laughs> on his on his chest. Yeah, just, can you imagine what that was like, man? I don't know. That I mean, you're thinking crazy. about thinking about in the moment, you know, <laughs> a bunch of teenage young adult fools didn't know what the heck was going on in yeah, life. They, they would have been, yeah, they would have been too old now. Yeah, you know, I think just being there in uh, in the flesh would been would been crazy. Oh yeah, what that's you, cool. Like, what do you say? Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> how's it know. going? Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for all you did. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for all you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me, when I, you know, <laughs> favorite scripture verse and why? Favorite scripture. Um, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Okay. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Um, plans to prosper you, uh, not to harm you, and give you a hope in the future. I think just because um, it's kind of the gospel. I think it's God's heart in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, I think God's heart for humanity is uh, he, His plans are not. That's good. I think sometimes we think of God as like this. You know, I, someone like, oh, I did something wrong. He wants to, you know, send his lightning bolt down and come and strike me down. Um. But his love for us, I think we have, you know, we can't even understand it, you know, and the fact that, um, you know, his plan that he does for every single person, he has a plan. Yes. Uh, and it's not to bring harm. Yeah. God wants to, you know, he has a future for you. That's good. He has, you know, there is hope. If you, even when things seem hopeless and even in the middle of pandemic and, um, you know, and hopefully we could be those hands and feet to be that extension. That's cool. Of that. All right, so it's 11 o'clock at night, 11.30, you're in your bed, right? I'm not in and bed. You're not in bed, you're sitting on the couch? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in my office, I'm looking, I'm watching. Okay, <laughs> all right, so you're there, and you're watching Braveheart, man. Oh, Braveheart? By yourself, Ooh. you're just okay. chilling. All right, all right. And, you know, you're like, man, I got a hankering for some munchies, man. Oh. What are you shoveling in your mouth? What late night snack are you shoveling in your mouth? Probably beef jerky. Or, beef jerky. I mean, <laughs> it's not anything healthy. You don't know. Uh, cool. Beef jerky or what else? Or maybe like a kettle corn or something like that. All right. One of those big old bags from Costco. That's cool. You know, takes like a month to eat. No, yeah, right. Anything from Costco takes <laughs> yeah, a month. Yeah, it's like, to eat. you know, <laughs> five, uh, pounds of, <laughs> five pounds of it or something. That's great, man. Um, favorite moments in your career? Oh, in my career? Yep. May not be the most, oh, low, but my favorite moment. You know, I think one thing that I really love that we do is every June, we take kids up to the lake. We take kids to Kui Lake. So a lot of these kids that we mentor all year long, um, that we have clubs, uh, kids on campus that we see, we take them to the lake. We have uh, usually about three or four boats. And uh, we barbecue hamburgers and just take the kids on the boat, pull them on a tube and just have an amazing time and to get to preach the gospel and bring kids to the Lord and see kids receive Jesus. Awesome. I love it. We had it this last summer. I got to do it and nine kids uh, raised their hands. So some of the kids I work with. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So it's really, I mean, the... One thing you really appreciate about our pastor, Pastor Mark Wallace. Oh, his dedication. I mean, he's been here since, what, in the mid-90s? Yeah. I mean, talk about... I've been with him for a long time, so that's why yeah, I asked that question. He's, probably, he's been here, I mean... Uh, you came in 03, his, right? His, I came in 03. I think you probably... I think yeah, I came, what, 95, 96? 96. 96. Yes, and somewhere around there. And so, just his dedication and... Cool. Uh, he is unbelievably uh just dedicated like i said just dedicated to the church i love it and it's his so heart true. his heart is here yep and so yeah that's always come through for me yeah you know his longevity because so many times pastors come and go oh, or, I do, man. you know in ministry and just, you just in life and you just know like positions you said, are you and, called yeah 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 so i think just that okay last question all right you ready yeah Uh-oh. if you were trapped in a foxhole in world war ii which person would you l- most like to have in there with you to help you get out? Al, man. Wow. I mean, like I said, I- I'd have to go with Al. I mean, we've been, th- we've been probably worse than that. <laughs> no, uh, you know, we've been we've been through we've been we've been through, through some battles and and just being side by side with each other. You know, that's cool. Helping each other out and family stuff, crisis, um, personal, 
ministry, just everything. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I asked you before, spiritual legacy. When Darren's gone, because that'll happen someday. Mm, yeah. Maybe when you're 120 like Moses. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. What's your spiritual legacy going to be, Darren? I know it's not final yet. I know you're halfway done, but what's your spiritual legacy going to be? Spiritual legacy. What do you want it to be? That my kids. Okay. My kids are all, I, I've always said this, whether my, I don't care what my kids do for their career. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't say this in a bad way. If they go to school, if they go to work right afterwards, I mean, I always encourage them to do that, but I don't care if they work at Walmart, do whatever. I want them to serve the Lord. There you go. And that, that's always the top priority, yep. you know, that they live out their faith there you go. and it's not my faith. Yep. That is their faith. And I say that for faith, my daughter. <laughs> it's possible. I've got a 26, 22, and 21-year-old, and I've always said that my greatest accomplishment in life is that all three of my kids are serving Jesus. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm right there with you. I mean, wealth, whatever, nothing nothing matters. No. Nope. Because at the end of the day, you want your family uh, to have that knowledge and that, that understanding of and having that personal relationship with Jesus. And so yep. that's definitely what I want to be. <laughs> and my grandkids, too. Dude, that's why I love this guy. Seriously, I just really appreciate you, thank man. You. Love you too, uh, thank you for being humble. Uh, I watch you serve oh, um, you. week in and week out, uh, playing the guitar, being here on I love Wednesdays. it. I love playing. It's a, I know, it's a joy. I know, but I also see you serve in the community. I watch you chase your kids around. Yeah, I, uh, I watch you say <laughs> yes, ma'am, to your wife. Um, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like it. I do. <laughs> I like it. No, but really yeah. in serious and all seriousness, man, I've ever since I met you, man, I just really appreciate you and your oh, heart you. Uh, for, for teenagers, um, your heart for your, your kids and and uh, just heart for your church, just to serve. And um, so, man, Thank I, you. just you're you're awesome guy. It's a it's a blessing. I love coming and playing. It's, it's not even a burden. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Thanks, my man. Appreciate yeah, for it. Sure, for Wasn't sure. that good? Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Y'all be blessed. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll see you next week. Awesome.